Well, we're under an air quality alert. I know a lot about quality alerts. But, uh, so we're trying to stay indoors as much as possible. Even though, well, that's our studio. So today, this week we're talking about shows that debuted in 1970 focusing on primetime and the first one that comes up here is Arnie, CBS, Herschel Bernardi stars as Arnold Budig, a blue collar worker that suddenly gets promoted to a new position of and vice president in charge of new product development. And Sue Ann Langdon plays his wife, and he has two teenage children. The only thing I can remember about this series is his exclamation in the opening credits, Boy, oh boy. 20th Century Fox produces, and it originally aired, was scheduled for Saturday evening at 9 p.m., during its second season, it moved to 10.30 on Monday evenings, and then midway in January, it finished out at 9.30 p.m. on Saturday nights, following a program it had originally prece preceded, which we will get to in further detail. Barefoot in the Park, ABC. Well, this is one of two series that was based on a play written by Neil Simon that went into and became a motion picture. And I think it was uh, Robert Redford and Jane Fonda that w was in this series, or in the movie, rather. Well, they decided to cast a couple, some black principals, Nipsey Russell, Scoey Mitchell, Claire Danes, Lasted only 13 episodes because Mitchell was fired. Production problems. Paramount produces. It originally it aired Thursday evenings at 9.30. And the show that it preceded, that it followed, excuse me. Well, that's one we'll get to as well. Hold on. Okay, The Bold Ones, The Center, NBC. This was a new ser a new program, a new, new uh, series. Hal Holbrook playing a senator. Forgot about this one. The Children's Hour. I'm guessing that this aired on Saturday afternoons around 12 noon. Or maybe later on as the predecessor to what became known as the CBS Children's Film Festival. So this was one of those anthology series that... Uh, we later became, uh, like, when we had the weekend specials growing up. Dan August, ABC. Burt Reynolds stars as the police detective. It also stars Norman Fell and Richard Anderson. And it was produced by Quinn Martin Productions. It's scheduled for Saturday or Wednesday evenings at 10 p.m. Lasted just one season, but three. But in the fall of 1973, CBS rebroadcasts it in that same time slot. Evening at Pops, PBS, the classic Boston Phil Pops Orchestra, led, conducted for many years by Arthur Feeler, later on by John Williams. The Flip Wilson Show, NBC. Flip Wilson, a young black comedian, does sketch comedy every or sketch comedy every week. Some of his famous characters include Geraldine and Reverend Leroy. Produced by Bob Johnson for Clero Productions, Clero being Flip Wilson's real first name, airs Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. and lasts four seasons. Four in one is in a is uh an umbrella title given to some programs that debuted on NBC, including McLeod, Psychiatrist at San Francisco International Airport, The Groovy Ghoulies, C or, yeah, CBS. 
a cartoon series aired often in tandem with Sabrina the Teenage Witch. One time it was known as Sabrina and the Groovy Ghoulies, and it moved. It uh, lasted one season, rebroadcast in the fall of 1975 on ABC. Headmaster, CBS. After a two-year absence, Andy Griffith returns to weekly television as the headmaster of a, of a boarding school. Jerry Van Dyke plays the football coach. The series leaves in mid-season, and the format gets totally retooled into the new Andy Griffith show, in which now he plays a, a mayor, Andy Sawyer, and Morgan Gilbert is his wife, and he has two young two children that that are probably the same age that Ronnie Howard was when he started as Opie Taylor on the Andy Griffith Show almost a whole decade later. The Immortal, ABC. Christopher George plays a man who cannot be, well, let's just say he cannot be injured. He cannot suffer any kind of illness. And there, he's always on the run because there's scientists out there after him. Paramount produces. I think this was, they tried to do this with Gilbert Gottfried. It originally scheduled for Thursday evenings at 10 p.m. and Mid-season moves to Wednesday evenings at 9.30, last just one season. The Intern, CBS. Five Young Doctors, based on a 1962 motion picture, take up residence at New North Hospital in Los Angeles. In order, we have Christopher Stone, Stephen Brooks, Hal Frederick is the black intern, Cal Barron. Mike Farrell as the newlywed, and Elaine Gussler, I believe was her name, as his wife. And rounding out the cast of female intern, the, the rounding out the group, Sandra Smith, with Broderick Crawford as Dr. Goldstone. You remember Broderick Crawford from the Highway Patrol. Screen Gems produces... Interesting note, this was the first series that it sold to CBS... In over in a decade, when Route 66 premiered in 1960, even though CBS had picked up Hazel for the 1965-66 season after it had been dropped by NBC, it suffice to say that the supplier's parent company, Columbia Pictures, was by no means related to the Columbia broadcast system, in spite of name similarity of names. Josie and the Pussycats. CBS cartoon series lasted two seasons. Lancelot Link's Secret Chimp, ABC, aired from 8 30 to 9 30 on Saturday mornings. Two chimp based on a comic strip, two, two chimpanzees are out to solve crimes in various episodes. The Mary Tyler Moore Show, CBS. And for the last 15 years, I've always assumed that the official title was simply Mary Tyler Moore, a la George Lopez. Well, our heroine moves to Minneapolis and takes, or takes an apartment in a Victorian-style home. Cloris Leachman plays Phyllis Lindstrom, the landlady. Valerie Harper plays Rhoda Morgenstern, the upstairs neighbor who insisted that Phyllis promised her that apartment. Mary Richards takes a job at low-rated news station WJM in Minneapolis. Edward Asner is the news director Lou Grant. Gavin McLeod plays Mary Slaughter, the news quick-witted news writer. Ted Knight plays the dim-witted news anchor Ted Baxter. John Amos plays Gordy the Weatherman. Betty White appears as Sue Ann Nivens of WJM-TV's The Happy Homemaker. And Georgia Engel plays Georgette, Ted's girlfriend and bride-to-be. Created by Alan Burns and James Brooks, Ed Weibiger and 
Weiberger and Stan Daniels produced the series for a new company called MTM Enterprises, which more formed with Grant Tinker. The series last originally airs at 9.30 on Saturday evenings and moves up a half hour in the winter of 1972, where it remained until the series ended in 1977. Matt Lincoln, ABC. Vince Edwards plays a psychiatrist. Universal produces. It airs Thursday evenings at 7.30. Canceled after one season, likely due to heavy competition from Flip Wilson. McLeod. NBC. Originally installed uh, one of the installments of 4 and 1. This Right. Dennis Weaver plays Sam McCloud, who, who is a deputy in New Mexico and moves to New York. We don't know exactly how many seasons we had, except it, would, it eventually became part of the Sun, NBC Sunday Mystery Movie, Universal Produces. Monday Night Football, ABC. And when the National Football League absorbed the American Football League, it decided to reconstruct its TV package so that all three networks would get involved in the production. Monday Night Football is still around, although in 2006, it moved over to ABC's parent, uh, sister network, ESPN, as Disney apparently tried to rebrand ABC as a female-oriented network. The original broadcasters, well, the original play-by-play -play announcers were Frank Gifford and Don Meredith, but the third man in the broadcast booth made the show for at least the first 13 seasons, Howard Cosell. It's this these days, the com his somewhat irreverent commentary would probably be best fitted by the likes of Stephen A. Smith and female sideline reporters. The most deadly game, ABC. Well, three people trying to solve crimes. This is kind of like an older version of the Bod Squad. Aaron Spelling is uh, produces. It's scheduled for Saturday evenings at 9.30, right after the Lawrence Welk show. Well, Lawrence Welk's audience, needless to say, checked out halfway through, so they probably... That's probably what killed the series after one season. Nancy, NBC. Not much I can tell you about this series, except Sidney Sheldon of I Dream of Genie creates and produces the series for Screen Gems. It is gone. It is scheduled for Thursday evenings at 9.30, replacing Dragnet, and is in turn replaced in mid-season by Dragnet's spinoff series, Adam 12. Night Gallery, NBC. Rod Serling returns to television with some with a Twilight Zone clone, in which he's in an art gallery. It it was a, produced by Universal. It airs Sunday evenings at 10 p.m. Although it was also part of that four in one umbrella series. During its second season, it aired from 10 to 10.30 in a half-hour format. The Odd Couple, ABC, the second of the Neil Simon plays, turned movies, turned TV series. Tony Randall plays Felix Unger, who has just been thrown out of his home by his wife, moves in with his longtime friend Oscar Madison. James or Jack Klugman plays him. And the series of uh, uh, Paramount produces the series originally airs Thursday evenings at 9 p.m., moves to Friday evenings at 9.30 for its second and third seasons, 8.30 for its fourth season, 8 p.m. Thursday evenings for its fifth season, and midway through back to its original time slot, uh, back to its former time slot at 9.30. The Partridge Family, ABC. Shirley Jones plays Shirley Partridge, who is a widow to five children, who all of a sudden decide to form a rock band. 
David Cassidy, who is his step, who was her stepson in real life, having married her his father, Jack Cassidy, plays Keith Partridge. Susan Day plays Lori Partridge. Danny Bonaducci plays Danny Partridge, the schemer of the group. Jeremy Gelblax was originally cast as Chris. He moves out of town and is replaced after one season by Brian Forster. Suzanne Crow plays Tracy, Chris's twin sister. And Dave Madden plays the band's manager, Ruben Kincaid. In spite of all this scheming and rhyming and scheming, Danny actually has respect for Mr. Kincaid. Bob Claver produces for Screen Gems. The series airs at is scheduled for 8.30 on Friday evenings, moves to Saturday evenings at 8 p.m. in its third, fourth and final season. Some speculation said David Cassie got tired of the series, but the producers were ready in case the series actually got renewed. Oh, The Psychiatrist was another of those four-in-one series I talked about, as well as San Francisco International Airport. I told you about Sabrina the Teenage Witch. The Silent Force. ABC. Another short-lived drama produced by Aaron Spelling. Canceled in mid-season, replaced by The Real Game. Aired Monday nights at 8.30. Storefront Lawyers. CBS. Not much I can tell you about this series. It was retooled entitled Men at Law. And Leonard Freeman of Hawaii Five-0 is producer for National General Corporation. It airs Wednesday evenings at 7.30. That Nashville Music. Originally titled that good old Nashville Music. Broadcasts every week in syndication from the Grand Old Opry. Then, then known as then situated in and Ryman T Auditorium. Longtime sponsor was Perina Dog Chow. Various guest hosts each week. Wall Street Week, PBS, airs every Friday at 8 p.m. Where's Huddles, where Real Jerry Lewis, please sit down. The cartoon series, Words and Music, A, wor a World Apart. Daytime drama that I never had a chance to see. It aired on ABC at 1230. The Young Lawyers, ABC. Lee J. Cobb is, uh, has a couple of young associates working for him. Paramount producers, Matthew Rapp is the producer. Monday, evenings, Monday evenings at 730. And The Young Rebels, also ABC. Story of three young men in the Civil War era, and one of them being Louis Gossett Jr., another one I'm not too familiar with. I know Screen Gems produced. It was scheduled for 7 p.m. on Sunday evenings. Lasted just one season. As a matter of fact, ABC decided to do away with airing pro scheduling programming in that time slot for about three or four seasons, except maybe for Jacques Cousteau specials and other specials came out at that time. So there you have it, a look at television programs that debuted in 1970. And again, we try to emphasize the ones that debuted in prime time. We're going to take a few weeks off as um, I'm going to get ready to preview high school football in the upcoming season, which actually debuts August 17th, kicks off August 17th, our first game for most people, will be Friday, August 18th. I invite you to leave comments, and thank you for watching this video.